Hallo Deutschland all. Welcome to yet another live stream. Today uh, we're just kind of sitting around chatting it up and uh, seeing what kind of conversational things happen. Uh, and also I have a few uh, little things that I want to show you that I've been working on that uh, I haven't been talking about yet. Uh, so yeah, just something I got kind of going on in the background, kind of like these books over here in the background. Uh, so uh, I've got a few things that I'm going to talk about today. I don't have a uh, presentation that's put together like I have been on the last several uh, live streams. I will for next month. Uh, next month is April. So uh, whenever we have our live stream for that one, it will be on April the 1st. So I will have that uh, live stream set up so that there is a little bit of a presentation. It's got some uh, silly little jokes in there and there's some uh, April Fool's tie-in kind of things. Uh, so if you want to tune in for that, that is going to be coming up next month. Uh, but for right now, today, we're just going to have a, uh, a little chit-chat, talk about whatever it is that's going on in your lives, whatever's going on in my life, and uh, yeah, basically all of the things uh, German-related or not, uh, we're just going to kind of go through it and uh, hang out for a while. Uh, so, very first thing that we're going to be talking about today uh, is my kind of super secret but not secret uh, project. So I've already written these two books, which uh, obviously are still sitting back there on the shelf. Um, and I am currently putting together the third version of that book. Uh, there will eventually be an A, uh, well, there is an A1 and there's an A2. Now there's going to be a B1. Uh, that B1 book, I'm going to be splitting into two parts. Uh, so there's an A1.1 and an A1.2. Uh, I should have the A1.1 done by the end of this year. So sometime in, uh, in between now and December. So uh, not anything coming up like super soon, but it is uh, in the back burner, still kind of churning around in my brain exactly how I want to go about it. Um, the other thing that I'm working on is kind of changing the uh, the Deutsch, uh, Discovering Deutschland series that I've been working on, uh, that animated series with uh, basically my face uh, on three different bodies and going around Berlin and seeing things and, uh, you know, talking in German about all of the things that they're seeing. Uh, that series, I am planning on doing a novelization of it. So basically taking the story that I've been telling so far and uh, adding to it and changing it into so so that it's not like dialogue back and forth between the characters uh, as much, uh, but more of a narrative story that tells uh, what happens with them and what's going on. It'll also include a little bit more backstory as to who these characters are, where they came from, uh, some general information about that kind of thing, uh, the usual things that go into a novel. Uh, so those are the two books that I have that are kind of not in the uh, near future, but they are hopefully coming out by the, uh, by the end of this year. Uh, I should have those up and running uh, for sale on Amazon and all of the places where you get books. Uh, it'll be probably just a paperback version and an ebook. Uh, but if you're looking for those, those should come out sometime between now and uh, December. The one that I am currently working on that is uh, actually something that I can talk about at this point, um, that is... Let's switch over here to this. Uh, the German case system. Uh, so a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I did a series of uh, live streams that eventually just uh, were edited down and changed into a, uh, a full-length video. They're about an hour long each. And I did one for the accusative case, one for the dative case, and one for the genitive case. Uh, I also did one for the present tense. So if you uh, looked up those, if you look in for... Uh, you know, accusative case masterclass in German, uh, you'll find my face on there. Uh, and that is a series that I want to kind of bring back, but I want to do it in a slightly different format. So uh, this is just the first slide of many that I'm putting together. There's actually 119 slides right now uh, for this case system thing. Basically what I'm going to do is take the uh, case system uh, 
presentations that I did for that video or those videos uh, for accusative, dative, and genitive, and I'm going to combine them into one giant masterclass that goes through literally everything you will ever need to know about the German case system. Uh, so I'm going to start with the basics of, you know, what is a case system? Why do we have it? What are genders of nouns? How can you choose the proper uh, gender of a noun uh, without, you know, a whole lot of guesswork? Um, so I'm going to go through that kind of thing at the very beginning of it, uh, and I go into the nominative case, how to use it, accusative case, how to use it, uh, dative, and then genitive, uh, and I kind of go through the things that are specific to those different cases, uh, and then after that I go back through and I go through the pre uh, prepositions that you use for it, the pronouns that you use for it, the uh, adjective endings that you need for it, all of the things that go along with the cases uh, and the case system that is all in that presentation. So it uh, starts off with the just a general slide there of all of the things. Then there is uh, the color coding change that uh, I usually use, which is red for nominative, green for accusative, dark blue for uh, dative, and purple for genitive. And then I always do the charts in the order of uh, what my German teacher did as well, which is masculine, feminine, neuter, and plural. Um, and then there's a bunch of things in there that tells you what's in the course, what's a case, uh, and they go through genders of German nouns, and nominative case, and definite articles, and indefinite articles, and all of the things, accusative case, and genitive case, and dative case, and all of the things. Uh, but eventually, if you keep on going through the uh, giant PowerPoint that I put together here, uh, you will eventually get to... Do, do, do somewhere in here. Aha! There's a, there's a big blank space. Uh, there's that one. Uh, it says generic words here for the genitive prepositions part of this presentation. Uh, and that's because I haven't finished all of the parts that are together for this uh, presentation. There are currently 119 slides in here. There will be probably close to 200 to 250 uh, by the time that I am actually done with the uh, presentation part of it. I am already recording some of the audio to go with this. I've put together a lot of the pieces of the puzzle that uh, need to go together. Um, but all of this is a completely separate thing from these two books over here. Uh, these two books are A1 and A2 books. Uh, they are designed for people who are learning kind of the general overview of all of the things. So they include listening comprehension and vocabulary and grammar lessons and all of that kind of all put together. Uh, but this German case system thing that I'm working on is completely separate from that, and it will eventually be available as a book and an ebook. and I will incorporate this into my courses that I sell. Uh, if you go over to the uh, Deutsch Lerner Club, um, so this thing here, in the Deutsch Lerner Club, uh, you can see the uh, the courses that I currently offer. Uh, there is the Deutsch Lerner Club itself, which is basically all of the courses, uh, but you pay it as a monthly installment, so you pay $15 a month, uh, and then you can just cancel whenever you want. That one will include this new course that I am building, uh, which is all of the cases and all of the things you will ever need to know about the cases. Um, and I will probably actually build that out as a separate course, but when you sign up to be a part of the Deutsch Lerner Club, it will all be included in that. Um, so that's kind of what I have going on in the back burner. Um, the one that I'm trying to do right now is the uh, case system thing. So all of the uh, things that have to do with the German case system, that's all being put together in that one big presentation. Um, that is my, my number one priority at the moment as far as big projects go. Um, I'm hoping to have the presentation part of it done and the audio recorded to go with it. Uh, all of those kinds of things should be done by the end of this month. So by the end of March, I should hopefully have the uh, video and presentation part of things done. Um, then in April, I'm going to you know, try and hunker down and get the uh, book put together as far as all of the text part of things. Um, once that book is put together, uh, I've got some friends that I'll have uh, proofread it, make sure that I don't do anything egregiously stupid in there. Um, and then once all of that happens, uh, I will finally have that hopefully published in May or June, uh, probably leaning more towards June by the time that I get all of the text things put together. Um, 
but that is the German Case Masterclass book. I don't have a name for this book yet. Uh, it's something that I'm kind of mulling around. Um, I haven't exactly decided how I want to market it, uh, but it will be an overview of all of the cases. Uh, there is the question from Bobby C, is, uh, is this course designed for B1 students? Um, the B1 course is currently being built out in the uh, weekly bonus lessons. So uh, actually, let me pull up here the uh, back end of my teachable course uh, so I can show you what's going on in there. But the uh, B1 course is currently being built as kind of a, a side project. Um, it's not anything that I have as a great priority at the moment, uh, but it is something that I am using, um, that I'm building as we go. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's available now, but it's not available now, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Probably not. Um, but it, basically, it is... Uh, all right, so this thing here. So this is the uh, weekly bonus lessons course, which is a part of the Deutsche Lerner Club. Uh, if you go through here, there's everything that I've uploaded since December of 2022. Uh, that has a lesson that's built into this. Uh, so there is Farben und Fliegen, for instance, is uh, my bow ties and colors thing. That's obviously more of an A1, A2 kind of level uh, for those stories there. Uh, but we have like the Deutsch Lern Geschichte, that's definitely more B1, B2. Uh, and then there's a lot of stuff in here that I've been doing that are aimed at the B1 and B2 levels. Uh, and that's because these things will eventually be a part of my course for my B1 and B2 courses. Um, but I'm building those as kind of a, a trial run, if you will, for all of the B1 stuff. Uh, and that is all the way through March of this year. Um, and there's, if you're a part of the Deutschland Club, by the way, you get access to things ahead of time. So if I finish a video, for instance, I have several videos that are in the queue at the moment. Um, when, uh, when you get a, into the Deutschland Club, you automatically get access to these things. So the one that's on there from uh, March that says German Genders of Nouns Overview, uh, that video will be coming out on YouTube soon, but all of the materials that go with it, the worksheets and the extra stuff that I always upload for uh, that lesson, as well as the video itself, is already on the Deutschland Club. So you don't have to wait in uh, the usual YouTube stuff. Uh, you can just go straight to... Uh, the Deutschlander Club and check every once in a while. It's got new updates all the time on there. Um, and I'm constantly putting in more uh, work for that course. Uh, I just actually recorded 12, I think, uh, different videos for worksheet explanation videos that go into that course um, and a long list of other things that are currently going on in the, uh, the background that if you're not a member of the Deutschlander Club, Definitely check that out. Uh, it's worth it just to have, uh, even if you're only doing the weekly bonus lessons, which are uh, a smaller amount uh, per month than the uh, the whole Deutschland Club. But if you're doing just the weekly lessons, it's worth it just to have the practice materials to go with whatever lesson it is that I do that week. So uh, I just did one about the past tense of uh, haben and sein in the Präteritum, and then there's a worksheet that goes with that and some exercises. Uh, same thing for the uh, Präteritum forms of uh, modal verbs. I just did a video about that on YouTube, uh, and there's extra materials to go with that um, up on the Deutschlander Club. So uh, if you're not a member of that, definitely check that out. It's, uh, it's worth at least looking at and seeing if you uh, uh, enjoy that kind of thing. Uh, Chad B says, uh, Servus, I aced college German uh, first year. What do you offer for me going forward? Uh, currently, everything that I am doing on my YouTube channel is uh, related to the... Um, a1 and, or no, uh, not A1. Uh, everything that I'm currently uploading to my YouTube channel is aimed at the B1 level. Uh, so I just did a couple of videos about the Preteritum tense and how to use that. Um, I'm doing some, well, I'm, I'm gonna do some backtracking actually and do a video uh, about genders of nouns. So that's definitely not something that's like B1 level by any means. Uh, but I do have a lot of other B1 level uh, worksheets and videos coming out in the very near future. Um, so all of that is to say that if you aced your first year of German uh, language learning at a college, you're probably at the A2 level, um, just as a general guess based on my experience in the university. Um, 
But if you're at the A2 level, I still do have that A2 course on uh, on my website, courses.germanwithantrim.com. Um, and then I also have the uh, most recent uploads from uh, my YouTube channel, basically the last like 30 or so videos. Uh, they've all been lay aimed at the uh, B1 level. So that's kind of just one step above where you currently are, Chad. All right, so I've been rambling for a little bit. That's about uh, 10 or 15 minutes almost of uh, me just sitting here rambling about the things that I have going on in the background. Um, I've got the uh, B1 course book that is being written that's probably going to be done by the end of this year. Uh, I've got a uh, novelization of the uh, Deutschlander Klo or the uh, Discovering Deutschland series uh, that's on YouTube. Uh, that is going to be novelized soon, and then I'm also doing the uh, the case system master class uh, that I'm going to be putting together into a book so that you uh, know everything there is to know about the German case system, and you can kind of use it as a reference uh, if you want, or you can use it as uh, an actual like front-to-back course kind of book. Uh, but those are my three main projects that I have going on right now. Uh, so this is where you guys get to ask questions. If you have anything that you want to know about me, uh, about the German language, about uh, learning German, anything that you got going on uh, in the realm of German learning, um, yeah, just let me know in the comments down below and we'll uh, get into the Q&A kind of stuff. In the meantime, uh, I do want to uh, make mention at least of, uh, you know, what's going on in uh, my world. So uh, let's see. If you don't know this about me, I have uh, a relatively extensive garden in my backyard that uh, I built together with my wife uh, last year. So uh, we put together this gigantic brick garden thing. Um, I'm trying to pull up a picture of it here so we can show that, but garden. Um, doo -doo. Nope. All right. So uh, anyway, we built this thing. It's all out of brick and uh, it's uh, about three feet tall or uh, about one meter tall. And uh, we got really into gardening over the last couple of years and uh, got tired of bending over all the time to uh, put together the garden. So we uh, yeah, there we go. There's a decent picture of it. Um, let's see. Ta da. So yeah, this is uh, my garden in my backyard. Uh, as you can see, it's got uh, that picture anyway, it has Brussels sprouts and some squash and broccoli and cauliflower and all kinds of stuff. Uh, we kind of outgrew the garden already. And so there's some stuff off to the side there that's uh, in baskets. Uh, those baskets are uh, uh, potatoes. So we grow potatoes in baskets because it's easier just to dump them out whenever you're uh, done growing them. And then you can just kind of pick out the potatoes out of them. Um, but yeah, we have uh, lots of lots of stuff in the garden. So that's what I've been doing for the last couple of days is uh, filling that garden back up with uh, extra soil that uh, kind of gets compacted over the year. Uh, so I've been putting that back together. And I've also been, uh, you know, putting in some plants and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, things that are in the garden, we have uh, Blumenkohl, which is, uh, is cauliflower in German. Um, we have Rosenkohl, which is uh, Brussels sprouts. Uh, we also grow broccoli, which is just broccoli. Uh, Kartoffel, which is potatoes. Um, da haben wir auch noch Möhren, which are uh, carrots. Um, dann sind noch... Uh, Manchmal Kürbisse, sometimes we grow uh, pumpkins in there. Um, was noch? Mais, we have, uh, we have corn in there, so mais. Um, oh yeah, mostly fruits and vegetables. Um, we do have some grape vines that are growing in there now. Um, we've got, uh, we just planted some new blueberry bushes because the other ones we had died. Um, we do have an orange tree, so uh, lots of random stuff in the backyard. Uh, Chad says, I know reading is paramount in learning. I'll be in Germany soon for a trip. What books do you recommend to get uh, the Hugendubel? Uh, 
Oh yeah, the Hugendubel uh, books that you can get for uh, while you're at, in Germany. Hugendubel, by the way, is uh, a very famous German bookstore. So if uh, those of you in the comments that don't know what we're talking about, uh, that is what he's referring to here. Is a, it's a bookstore chain that's in Germany. Um, if you're going out and getting books while in Germany, I would literally just pick up whatever it is that you're interested in. Um, so. If you are interested in anime, pick up a German anime book. If you're interested in German comic books, pick up a German comic book. Um, whatever it is that you're interested in in your native language, just use that in your uh, in your target language. So, um, I just read All's Quiet on the Western Front recently. Um, I finished that, I don't know, probably about a month ago now. Uh, but I finished that, and uh, it's just interesting to me to read about history from the point of view of the Germans, uh, which is not usually what you get uh, as an American. We don't really see that version of history very often. Um, so that was interesting for me to read. Um, but otherwise, I would just say whatever it is that you're interested in, in your target, uh, in your native language, use that as what you look up in your target language. So um, I try to recommend things that are uh, related to vocabulary that you might need, some uh, grammar that you might need or something like that, um, which would be like if you are planning on doing a study abroad in Germany, maybe buy a book that has to do with a college kid going to school. Um, or if you're planning on traveling around in Germany, pick up a book that is just someone traveling around throughout Germany um, as kind of a, a how-to book of sorts. Uh, even if it's a fiction book, um, you don't have to do anything outlandish with uh, your German learning, um, but the easiest way to really get the most out of any reading that you're doing um, is just to find something that you're actually interested in so that you will actually put in the time to read it. Uh, what I've found a lot is that students will buy a German book and then just let it sit there on the shelf um, and not ever actually read cover to cover. Um, I have lots of books over here. I've actually read all of the books that are on that shelf. Um, so it's not one of those bookshelves that I just have back there for uh, uh, pretty designs and stuff. I've got uh, Die Schönsten Märchen, for instance. Uh, this is a book about uh, German fairy tales. Um, there's... I did a review of this book a while back. It's German for everyone. It's uh, it's not a terrible book. Um, it's not perfect by any means, but it's, uh, it's a decent book. Um, a book that I'm relatively disappointed that isn't available online anymore that I can find is uh, this book called Die Deutschen, uh, which is a German history book that uh, starts off with, uh, you know, German tribes and stuff, and then kind of goes through everything all the way up until... I think this version goes up until the 90s. Uh, I could be wrong. I don't remember exactly where it ends up. It's been a while since I've read it. Um, boom. That's all dictionary stuff. Exercises. More exercises. Yeah, this one, by the way, also comes with... Uh, practice exercises with answer keys in the end of it. So uh, you want to go back uh, and like practice what it is that you're learning. This one also has like those exercises already in it. Um, talking about Switzerland in the 1970s. A visit to the Switzerland. Ein Besuch in der Schweiz. Besuch in Österreich. Kirche und Gesellschaft. Uh, mass median. Hmm. Anyway, uh, I don't remember where it ends up, but uh, this is a decent book. If I could actually find it anywhere online, that would be great. Um, let's see, what else we got here in the comments? Uh, currently working on uh, the beginner book. Awesome. Can continue that. Uh, plan on uh, continuing with the elementary book. My question is, how long would you say it takes to speak German in a normal conversation? Danke. Uh, normal conversation you can probably do in within a month. It depends on what kind of conversation you want to have. Uh, you're not talking astrophysics by the end of your first month, but you should be able to have a basic conversation by the end of your first month uh, of German learning. That could be anywhere from just like getting to know you type stuff. So who are you? Where do you live? How old are you? What kind of interests do you have? Um, general conversation stuff. That is the bare minimum for A1 level. Um, you should definitely 
definitely be able to do that by the end of the first month. Um, do it as like a week by week basis. So week one, uh, all about you. So just you in particular, not anyone around you, just you. Um, so who are you? What do you like to do? Where do you live? How old are you? Um, all of those kinds of things, describing yourself in various ways, uh, that can all be done in week one. Uh, week two, I would then move to people around you. So family members and friends. Uh, these people, how do you describe them? What is their relationship to you? How would you uh, talk about, um, you know, whatever it is that you do together? Um, and then third week, you should be into um, taking more of a deep dive into the things that you do on a daily basis. So this could be anything from like... Um, what kind of chores do you do on a daily basis? Or uh, what is your occupation? What kind of job do you do? Um, talking about yourself in that kind of light. Um, but not just what do you do, but how do you do what you do? Um, all of that can be done in like week three. Uh, and then week four, you can kind of round things out with uh, questions and answers about other people um, and just kind of general information about uh, all of the things around you in your life. Um, but that would be like month one if you wanted to do week by week by week. Um, my course books over here uh, will probably take you a little bit longer uh, just because of the way that they're put together. They have a lot of grammar in there, a lot of uh, base level grammar type stuff that you need to uh, get out of the way whenever you're first building sentences and stuff. Um, but if you want to immerse yourself in German and uh, just figure out how to say this conversation piece, how to say that piece, conversation piece, uh, you could probably do that in about a month and have a decent conversation about yourself and your surroundings and uh, your likes and dislikes and uh, occupation. Um, anything beyond that, I would say within six months, most German students should be able to hold a decent conversation in German. Um, with with some scaffolding. So meaning that you still have a little bit of support, a little bit of help from the outside. Um, maybe you have a dictionary handy or maybe you have, um, you know, some set parameters for the conversation uh, so that you know you're not getting too far outside of your wheelhouse. Um, but it should be a decent conversation that you can have uh, with about six months of German learning. Uh, let's see, back to Chad, he's saying, I'm trying to find books at my level, for instance, adolescent level. Um, adolescent level for German learning. Um, I'm going to go back to the same thing that I always go back to, which is still on my shelf over here. Um, oh, all of these. So... These are all books by Angelica Bohn. Uh, if you've never heard me talk about her yet, uh, it means that you are not a fan of this uh, channel very often. But uh, basically, there are books that are written for every level of German learning. Um, and she has a ton of them at this point. Uh, this one is for A1 and A2 learners. It's called Nachbar Nummer 5. Uh, and this is basically somebody uh, lost a, a ring and, uh, well, they ordered one online and they lost the ring and uh, they had to go from like door to door with all of their neighbors and find out which one of them had the ring. That's A1 level. Uh, it's a very thin book, which is the reason that it's at the A1 level. Uh, this one is A2 level. It's one of my personal favorites of hers, actually. Uh, this book is Der Silbene Kugelschreiber, and it basically is uh, a story that uh, starts off with somebody losing a pen, and it follows the pen uh, uh, throughout all of the story that all ties together with various people that all interacted with the same pen. Um, it's a really cool story. I love the way that she put this one together, but this is for the A A1 uh, or A2 level. Uh, another one that is A1, A2 is Imavira Zasha, uh, which is a story about a guy who puts on some magical shoes that uh, transport him into the body of someone else who is also named Sasha. And so he goes and does whatever it is that that person does that day, and it kind of teaches him a, a moral lesson overall after that. Uh, this one is the sequel to that book, which is at the A2 level, which is Nie Vida Merle, uh, which is kind of the same thing. They put on magic shoes, they turn into somebody else that's named the same name, and uh, it follows that you know series of events from there. 
Uh, there's an A2 book, there is an A2B1 book, there is a B1 book, there's a B1B2 book, there's a B2 book, uh, and then we have all of the extra books that she has. These are less of a actual like storytelling kind of story. Uh, these are um, phrases that you might need to know. So uh, this one is the first one, which is Bock auf Deutsch. Uh, this one is meant for this B2 through C2, because these are kind of like idiomatic expressions and stuff. Uh, and then the other one is Jetzt sei kein Frosch. I believe she actually has a third one of these out now, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's been a while since I've been on her website uh, to see what else she has out. But um, if you go to uh, the description box down below, uh, I do have a... Um, an Amazon affiliate page that you can go to and you can see all of the recommended books that I choose uh, to point out. Um, there is also a, a thing on my website if you go to germanwithantrum.com. Uh, the first thing that shows up there is a little form that you fill out. If you fill out that form, I will send you over my recommended resources for everything that you could possibly ever need in German learning. Uh, everything from books like these to online websites that you can use to read German or uh, YouTube channel recommendations or uh, magazine recommendations. Um, books for grammar, books for listening, or books for reading comprehension, um, podcasts for listening comprehension, all kinds of stuff. Um, there is a, uh, a thing at the top of my website where you just fill in your name and your email address, and then I send it over to you via email. Uh, it's just a PDF of like 27 pages uh, full of recommendations for German learners. Um, in addition to that, you also get my... Uh, my uh, planner that I put together, which is basically like a goal setting template. Um, and you can figure out like, where do you want to be in six months with your German learning? And how can you get from point A to point B, um, and kind of guide you through the goal setting process for all of that. Um, but both of those are totally free. You just go to my website and put in your email and uh, your first n first name or last name or whatever name you want to put on there. You could put Charlie Brown for all I care. Um, but it's just something to, uh, you know, collect information from people so that I can then uh, try and sell you on my Deutschlander Club. Uh, all right. So book recommendations. I think I did that. Uh, anything else that uh, is coming up right now at the moment for... Conversation wise, um, do, do, do. No. nix noyes. So I, uh, I currently am working on the fourth episode of, uh, yeah, the fourth episode of the, uh, Deutschlander, no, the, uh, Discovering Deutschland series. Uh, the one with the little animated versions of me. Uh, I'm working on a fourth episode of that. Uh, I have it put together partially, but not quite all the way. So um, I'm still working on uh, a few of the dialogue things that I'm not quite happy with yet. Uh, but that will be coming out hopefully in the next month or so. Um, I'm trying to do one of those a month, but I'm just not very good at it. So I'll come back to those eventually. Um, would you recommend mastering German vocabulary, a thematic approach? Is it with, uh, is it, uh, sorry, I can't read the, uh, comment through my thing here. Uh, is it in line with A1? Um, so the mastering German vocabulary, a thematic approach, oops, this book. Uh, I recommend it basically every live stream that we have. I, uh, I mention this book, uh, but it's one of my personal favorites because it's basically just a dictionary. But um, instead of going by like the usual way, we have like this page says, uh, oh, there we go. Will it focus? It will focus. So this has uh, photography and filming on there. And then it just goes through all of the vocab that you could possibly need to go with uh, photography and uh, filming. Uh, and then the, that goes on for a couple of pages. Uh, and then there's hobbies and games and uh, all kinds of other stuff. So the question was, does this align with the A1 level? Uh, the answer is kind of, but not on purpose. So <laughs> this book is meant as a, uh, a thematic approach to vocabulary learning. So while you may not need the particular words that they use in here, um, as 
at the A1 level, for instance, you don't need to know about filmmaking and cameras, obviously, at the A1 level. Uh, but there is some stuff in here like family and uh, family vocabulary. Uh, there we go. Yeah, family and family vocabulary. Um, that is uh, really helpful information to have, especially at the A1 level, uh, because the most familiar things to you is what's at the A1 level. Uh, so while there are lots of things in here that are not aimed at the A1 level, um, overall, because you're eventually going to need that other vocab anyway, um, it is definitely uh, worth checking out, in my opinion, anyway. Um, So we have a, uh, a partnership with our uh, with a school in uh, in Baden-Württemberg, and uh, in that area they speak Schwäbisch. Um, after our first uh, exchange program that we did over there, um, I well during the exchange we went to this farmhouse and did a tour there and talked about the history and uh, all of these things. Uh, at least I assume that's what we talked about because uh, we went through this tour and the elderly woman who was doing the tour only spoke Swabian dialect or Schwäbisch. Um, and because of that, I had no idea what she was saying all the time. And at first I thought like, is my German really that bad? Am I seriously deficient in my German learning uh, that I need to you know, go back and uh, go back to the university and try and learn some more stuff? Uh, but then I turned to the German who's like legit from Germany, lived in Germany her whole life and said, uh, what is she talking about? I don't understand her. And uh, she's like, oh, no, 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 I'm not from around here either. I don't know what she's saying either. And that made me feel much better that she didn't understand Schwäbisch either. But uh, Schwäbisch für Anfänger is uh, this book here. Um, and it goes through and has like dialect things uh, to kind of teach you how to use the Swabian dialect. Um, and so it has like, uh, Guten Tag, wie geht's? Which is, hello. How are you? But in uh, Swabian, it's uh, Gris Gott, uh, wir Gott's no au immer. I don't know. Like I said, it's uh, it's very difficult to read. It's very difficult to understand. Uh, I don't do uh, I don't do a whole lot of dialects. I can do a Berliner a little bit, but uh, it's not that far off from Hochdeutsch. Um, Bayerisch is very difficult for me, um, and Schwäbisch. I can at least kind of pick up on a few things that kind of uh, make sense for the, the way that they say them. Um, but there's lots of words in Swabian that are just like entirely different words. So uh, she, whenever we got done with our first exchange, uh, my exchange partner got me that book uh, to try and teach me some Schwabish uh, so that I can figure out what they're talking about the next time. Uh, it did not take, so I still do not know Schwabish. Uh, can you speak to Hochdeutsch? I was surprised to learn an experience of how dialects are spoken throughout the countries. Uh, I originally thought that everybody spoke Hochdeutsch like you do. Um, yes, most of them do speak Hochdeutsch with the exception of like a few elderly people who are still, um, you know, never going to learn Hochdeutsch because at this point, why bother? Um, but for the most part, anyone under the age of like 50 is going to speak both Hochdeutsch and their actual dialect. Um, they teach in schools and everything as Hochdeutsch. Uh, they take their exams in Hochdeutsch. Um, most everybody who is under the age of, I would say, 50 at least, um, will speak Hochdeutsch with you. Um, that works in like restaurants and, uh, and stores and anywhere that you're going to go as a tourist. Um, those are all places where they will speak Hochdeutsch um, and you don't have to worry about any of the uh, communication issues. Um, the reason that I had an issue is because we went to a historical farm uh, house where uh, they spoke dialect because that's the only thing that that woman spoke uh, and she was probably in her 80s uh, if I were guessing at her age. I have no idea uh, but she was old enough not to care about Hochdeutsch. We'll put it that way. Um, yeah, so I I don't speak uh, anything other than Hochdeutsch, at least not at any level that would be, uh, you know, helpful. Uh, Bobby wants to know what is Hochdeutsch. Uh, so 
Germany is rife with different dialects throughout the entire country. Uh, so in Berlin, they speak a different dialect than they do in Baden-Württemberg, and they speak a different dialect in, in Bayern, and I think there's like 30-something of them at this point uh, that are just different dialects. Uh, sometimes the dialect is just like uh, Berliner has um, ich instead of ich um, as the pronunciation of the word, and so there's not a whole lot of like uh, variations with that one. Uh, but other dialects, like I just mentioned with uh, Schwäbisch, the dialect is so far from uh, standard German, and it's difficult to understand because of that. Um, how many dialects in Germany? Uh, 230 million speakers worldwide, as many as 250 dialects exist. Interesting. I don't think it was quite that many, but all right. Uh, let's see if I can find the, uh, the map that I've seen before that shows dialects in a map. Um, oh, there we go. It was not terrible. Let's see if I can blow that up to a size that is actually legible. Not really legible. Um, doo -doo -doo. All right, so this is a map of Germany and surrounding areas. Uh, so we have dialects that are labeled in uh, various colors. Uh, if you were to just take like the general color scheme of uh, the red ones speak this way and the orange ones speak this way and the yellow ones speak this way, uh, that's kind of a generalization of how these work. Um, but the the ones in like Bavaria and Austria, Switzerland, Southern Germany, and then Swabia, um, those are all different dialects that uh, are similar in their pronunciation, but not quite the same. Um, so yes, Hochdeutsch is very, uh, is basically the standard version of, uh, of German. Um, if you are looking for the kind of the purest version of the German language, if you will. Uh, that is around the Hanover area, um, so up in northern Germany. Um, and this is the language that they uh, kind of consider to be no accent. So uh, my accent in English is Midwestern United States accent, which uh, is considered to be the non-accent version of English for Americans. Um, the German that you can kind of equate to that is up here in uh, Hanover area. Uh, but everybody else has got a dialect of some sort. So you have like the New York accent here in the United States. Um, that would be up in the far northern parts of Germany. That's a similar dialect. Um, then you have like the uh, almost Canadian, but not quite Canadian version for like uh, Michigan and Wisconsin and that area. Uh, and the don't you know, with lots of, uh, lots of nasal sounds. Um, that's also present in Germany. Um, and then the further south you go, the slower they speak, but also the more uh, twang they have to their voice. This happens in German and in English. Uh, so like if you go to Texas, there's a huge southern drawl that goes with that dialect. Uh, same thing happens in like uh, Alabama and Arkansas and those kinds of southern states. Um, same thing is happening in Germany uh, where we have kind of uh, a schmushmushing of the, the German language, if you want to call it that. That's, uh, that's my very technical term for uh, what happens whenever you get to um, <laughs> Swabian dialect and uh, Bavarian dialect. But the schmushmushing of the language. Um, and that's because if I didn't know what they were talking about, it would sound like Swedish chef to me. Uh, the and dirp and dirp and dirp and that's, uh, that's Northern German, uh, but Southern German is kind of like the schmush, 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 schmush. Um, it's Schwäbisch. Even the name Schwäbisch sounds like it should be a schmush, 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 schmush of the language. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Hochdeutsch. Speak Hochdeutsch. Uh, if you speak Hochdeutsch, you can communicate with all of the others because they were taught at least uh, how to speak Hochdeutsch in, uh, in conversation uh, whenever they were in school. Have you ever been to a German soccer game? Uh, nope. Like, none. Uh, not even like a, a, a school or a, a local, uh, local game or any of that. Uh, I've never been to a German soccer game of any kind. 
Um, the closest I would have maybe gotten is uh, the World Cup was happening one time when I when we were in Munich, um, and we watched a game from a Biergarten, so I. I got kind of the feel of it, uh, but that's about as close as I got as actually watching a German soccer game uh, in Germany. I uh, really love finding good German music and listening to it over and over again. Your videos that did on Deutschland by Rammstein was really good. Any plans to make another song breakdown video? Uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I, j I don't have a whole lot of time on my hands at this point. Um, I'm currently working on like 14 different scripts for videos and I've got the three books in the line um, and I'm working on a bunch of other things. Uh, plus I have a you know day job and three kids. Um, so I don't have that on the horizon at the moment. Um, what I would recommend though is uh, just put in a comment somewhere uh, if you would like me to you know take a look at a particular song if you think it would be uh, a good song for a lyrical analysis. Um, it's been a really long time since I've done one of these. Um, like I think the last one that I did was uh, when Rammstein came out with their new album. Uh, and I say new album because it was like 2018, I want to say. Um, let's go Rammstein. Rammstein. Uh, 2019 was when I did uh, the videos about uh, Rammstein with, uh, I did two videos, one for their song Deutschland and one for their song uh, Zeig Dich. Um, and that was actually before the album itself came out, um, when they, they released the single of Deutschland and then they uh, had some leaks and stuff. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, if you want recommendations for uh, music and things that you can use, um, I do have a playlist uh, for German music. I started updating it uh, a while back with some newer stuff because uh, I couldn't, uh, I don't know, I got a, a project that I do with my German students every year where they have to research a German band or artist, uh, and I hadn't updated that playlist since like 2019, so there were lots of uh, videos that should have been added to it. But uh, here's a, a playlist that I just put in the chat now uh, where you can find uh, German music. Uh, these are not necessarily like anything that I personally like or any genre that I like or any of that kind of stuff. It's just it's 500 different songs um, from a variety of different artists through the last like several decades. Um, there's tons of stuff in there. Uh, if you don't find any music that you like in that uh, playlist, uh, let me know and I can like shoot you an email or a message or whatever uh, that shows videos or music that goes along with um, whatever genre you're into. Um, I'm probably a little bit uh, scarce on rap music in that playlist, uh, but mostly because I use that playlist in class a lot. Uh, and if it has explicit lyrics, which most rap music does, uh, then I have to kind of watch what it is that I play during classes. Uh, so anyway, if you're looking for more music uh, recommendations, let me know. Uh, Chad wants to know uh, that thing that I said about uh, what all is included in the uh, courses that I offer. Um, so we'll go back to the Deutschland Club here. Uh, there we go. Uh, so this is the uh, Deutschlander Club. Um, that includes, if you are doing the $14.99 per month, uh, that gives you access to the A1 course, the A2 course, and the weekly lessons that I mentioned before. Uh, the weekly lessons that are available are uh, exactly what it sounds like. Those are the ones that I've been doing most recently. It includes everything from December of 2022, all of the extra materials that I've ever done with all of those things. Um, the, uh, those lessons are all in that weekly bonus thing here. Um, then the A1 and A2 courses are kind of full-fledged courses uh, that follow these books that I have behind me here. Um, but that is all included in the Deutschlander Club. Um, if you are a member of the Deutschlander Club, every course that I ever come out with will be a, por a part of the Deutschlander Club. Um, so I'm never gonna come out with a, a B1 course and then you have to pay a different amount for the B1 course to be added to the Deutschlander Club. It's always $14.99 per month. Um, and whatever it is that I'm currently working on, that is the newest thing that I've published. Uh, that is published onto the Deutschlander Club. 
Um, and then the A1 and A2 series are kind of static there. Um, I do have a few plans to kind of revamp a few things here and there, um, but not anything drastic at this point. Um, but that's what the Deutschland Club is. It's A1 and A2 courses, and then the weekly bonus lessons, which are mostly about the B1 level. Um, so that answers uh, Chad's question there. Um, good morning, sir. Watching you from uh, port -a court Nigeria. Um, well, welcome aboard. Uh, glad to have you from all the way across the pond. Uh, what is the best for someone preparing for migration as a registered nurse in Germany? Um, there is, uh, well, there are a bunch of different hoops that you have to jump through in order to migrate to Germany, uh, in order to stay there permanently. Um, there is an exam you have to take, uh, for the language component. Um, and I don't honestly know that much about the immigration portion to Germany. Um, I do know, I'm trying to think of what that website is called that, uh, does that stuff. How to immigrate to Germany. Uh, Germanvisa.org. No, that's not the one I want. Um, make it Germany. Make it in Germany. There we go. Um, so if you are a skilled person, which I consider a nurse to be a skilled person, and so would Germany, uh, if you are one of those people, uh, this is the website that you need. Um, it's in the, uh, the chat right now. Uh, and that is make it in Germany. Uh, they have a bunch of fantastic articles. The one that I just linked here is, uh, is specific to the, uh, new law that came out a while back. Uh, 2023 is when it's starting to be phased in. So relatively recent. Um, but it is, a way for people who are skilled workers to become German citizens, or at least be able to work in Germany, um, whether or not they become a citizen. Um, so there's a bunch of rules in there, but it goes through uh, general information about it. Um, one of the requirements here, it says though, is that you can be a nurse or a midwife, uh, and that would make it so that you are one of those highly qualified, skilled workers that they're looking for. Um, Germany is looking for certain occupations that they can't seem to find enough of in their own country. Uh, and so they are making it a lot easier for you to immigrate to Germany. Um, so yeah, definitely check out that website that I uh, just put in the chat down below. Um, it's a wealth of knowledge and uh, I've used it a few times to kind of send people to uh, a place that has more knowledge than what I do because I do not know that much information about uh, the immigration process. Um, do, 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 Jack says, Hey, Antrim. Hey, uh, thank you. Love your teachings. What do you think of German with Laura? Uh, I haven't actually watched any of her content. Uh, I do know, I know that sounds really bad, but, um, so I've seen her face because, her advertisements show up at the beginning of my videos a lot. And so if I'm not logged into YouTube, it uh, plays ads for me. And a lot of the ads that show up in front of my videos are from German with Laura. Um, from what I understand, she does grammar lessons and she does, um, she kind of takes grammar and does a little twist on it uh, to make it so that it is uh, more easy to comprehend. Um, I honestly don't know that much about her, her style, her courses, any of the things that she's doing. Um, I've seen her around. I've seen the face. Um, I know, um, I know her color scheme is like a dark greenish color. Um, but honestly, I know next to nothing about her actual courses or anything that she's doing. Um, so I don't know. If you find her videos helpful and interesting, by all means, watch her videos. Um, I think I'm one of those few people on YouTube who uh, I don't see any of the other YouTubers who are in the uh, German learning space as competitors. I think that the entire idea behind putting out educational content is to educate people. And if you can be educated by someone else, by all means, do that. Um, if you're watching easy German videos, you are probably one of the, you know, 98% of people who are learning German who are watching that channel. Uh, Easy German is fantastic stuff. I use it in classes a lot. Um, they're just amazing people. Um, and 
if you if you don't already watch Easy German, that's definitely something you should check out. Um, there's Lingoni, uh, that's uh, what used to be German with Jenny, is now Lingoni. Uh, she's fantastic. She has some great lessons. Um, German with Anya has always been one of my favorites. She's fantastic. Uh, we actually met up a few years ago in Berlin. Um, there's... I don't know. There's just so many German learning channels out there that you can definitely find something that fits your needs. Uh, so I'm never going to be one of those people who tells you that, like, if you got you got to learn just German from me, don't don't go out and find other people. No, by all means, absolutely watch everyone's videos. Um, if you want to know a well-rounded version of education, um, take advantage of all of the free things that are out there because uh, there is a wealth of knowledge that is being shared for free out there, especially on YouTube. Um, and yeah, definitely watch all of them. They're amazing. Uh, let's see what else we got. Flo says, I'm going to buy your uh, elementary book. Woohoo! Awesome. Uh, let's see. Thank you, sir, for your response. You're welcome. Absolutely. Uh, Flo says that the, they think that we are both great. Um, yeah, y'all should not be work, uh, competing with each other, but working together. Uh, I think we have the same end goal, which is the the whole point. I want to have people learn to, uh, the German language and learn to appreciate the German culture. That's the whole reason that I do the things that I do. It's why I became a German teacher to begin with, and it's why I started my YouTube channel. So to me, if I want people to learn German, I shouldn't be limiting them um, by saying, you know, you have to learn it with just me. Um, even if that were the case, it's stupid naive, naive to say that my materials are going to be the only thing you ever need. Um, there's not enough reading comprehension things in my book. Um, that's one of the things that, as a critique of my own work, um, I feel like I could have done a better job doing more uh, reading comprehension built into that. Um, but at the same time, then I wouldn't have had as much time to talk about all of the grammar things and it's a, uh, it's a catch 22. So what do I do in, a, uh, in addition to that? Um, well, in this book, for instance, uh, I believe I have it at the end of the book. Do, do, do. No, it's all on the online version. Sorry. Uh, so it's not in the paper ver version, but, uh, the paper version does have it like the very beginning of the book. Um, if you want extra materials to go with this and, uh, copies of the worksheets and stuff, there's a website on like the very first page of the book. Um, but there you can find all of the materials that uh, go with it. And one of the things that's in there is uh, at the end of each chapter, there is a list of links that I recommend. So it's like uh, I link videos from Easy German and Lingoni and uh, Anya and Deutsch für euch and all kinds of channels. Um, and they're all linked within the, uh, the online version of this book. Um, and yeah, it's... Uh, It's a, it's a sharing of knowledge, I would say. Uh, I use your book as a base in understanding German. Excellent book. Uh, thank you, Bobby. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, it's, it's always nice to hear uh, good feedback. Um, I did have uh, somebody uh, commented... What was it? Oh, uh, I did one of those uh, those quizzes that I've been doing on my YouTube channel, which uh, drive a lot of engagement. So lots of people answering the questions and uh, lots of people commenting on things and all of that. Uh, and it's just something that I do in between videos whenever I'm not posting a new video. I try to do uh, like every other day is a, a quiz and every other day is uh, an old video that I'm trying to you know promote again. Um, all of those things, whenever I uh, post those, uh, occasionally um, I will do something stupid and uh, make a mistake in, uh, in one of those quizzes. Uh, I, I phrased things wrong uh, in the, the way that I did it. And so one of the people commented on there, um, what makes you think that you are qualified to teach German? Um, and I did not respond to that comment, uh, but it, it was very tempting to do so because... Uh, the uh, the university I went to said that I was qualified. Uh, the school that I currently teach at thinks that I'm qualified. The 14 plus years teaching in a high school uh, seems to think that I am qualified to do this. Uh, I wrote two books which are decent and uh, have decent reviews on Amazon. Um, 
So I would say that I'm qualified for uh, teaching German, but you know, that's just one man's opinion. And I am uh, obviously biased in my opinion. So, uh, können Sie bitte das Passiv erzählen? Uh, I assume you mean erklären. Erklären is to explain. Erzählen is to tell. So like to tell a story. Uh, but können Sie bitte die, das Passiv uh, erklären? So, uh, yes, I plan on having a passive voice uh, video soon. Uh, I don't actually know how soon. I'm, I'm, I'll look it up here because I, I have a calendar of, uh, of lessons that I plan on uploading. And I do know that the passive voice was on there. Let's see. Uh, conjunctive. Do I have the passive on here? I do not. On my calendar full of things that I have, uh, I do not have the passive voice on it. It was on my radar at one point, but for some reason it's not on my calendar at the point, uh, at, uh, at the current moment. Uh, how many ways to say from the plural forms of nouns, plusquam, perfect. Ich hoffe, ich wünsche, ich hätte gern for the Konjunktiv 2, uh, Konjunktiv 1, more about the Konjunktiv 2, uh, the Futur 2, so the uh, future perfect tense, all of those are coming up. So I guess I need to explain how to use the passive voice and uh, see how well I can ad lib a uh, conversation about the passive voice. Um, so passive voice. Basically, if you have a sentence where you have something that is being acted upon in the sentence. So like, um, let's give the example I always give in class, which is, uh, I am slapping the man. I am slapping the man. So, uh, I am the one do, oops, I am the one doing something. And, uh, the something that I am doing is slapping. The person who is receiving that action is the man. So that would make him the object or the direct object in German. You would say, ich schlage den Mann. It would be den Mann because he's the direct object, okay? If you understand that fundamental part of things first, you can then go into the passive voice. The passive voice is used to remove the subject from the sentence and make it so that it is um, a more aloof way of talking. So instead of saying like, I am slapping the man, you want to use this in uh, the passive voice, you would say in English, I slapped, uh, or no, <laughs> that would be, uh, the man was slapped, or the man is being slapped. Um, in German, you use this with um, the verb werden, um, and you use it with uh, the past tense. So, wird geschlagen. So, um, der Mann wurde geschlagen would be like the man was hit. Um, the ma, der Mann wird geschlagen is the man is being hit. Uh, and you basically just change the, the past tense or the present tense or the future tense uh, with the, uh, with the uh, verb werden. Um, and you change that verb, but the other ones are always in the past participle and those go at the end. Um, let's see. Question of from Chad is uh, whether or not Germans use the passive a lot. Um, it it is in like news articles and stuff like that where um, you don't know who did the action, and so you want to use the passive voice to say like uh, a truckload of these things were stolen. You don't know who stole them, so you can't say the this group of people over here uh, stole these things. Um, instead, you can just say, um, die Sachen wurden gestohlen, which is the things were stolen. Um, so it happens a lot in news articles, news reporting, those kinds of things. Um, as far as conversation, I can't say that I use the passive voice much um, in normal conversation in English, uh, so I don't use it very often in German either. Um, that being said, it is something that I think you should know about, but not necessarily know how to use. Um, it's one of those categories of things. There's a lot of things in grammar that uh, I believe fall into that category. Like uh, conjunctive eins, for instance, the uh, subjunctive one. Uh, that one is the one that's also used in reporting. I think it's something that you should be able to recognize. So if you say like er sage, that's like he said, um, then like you should know what that means and where that is coming from, but not necessarily that you need to be able to build it yourself. Uh, da, da, da. 
I ask because the uh, it is preferable to avoid it in Romance languages. Yeah, uh, I generally avoid the passive voice just because it's not something that I find uh, attractive in the way that you express things. Uh, Bobby says that it sounds like an intransitive verb. You've got it backwards. Um, transitive verbs are verbs that can have a direct object, um, and those are the ones that can be used with the passive voice. So if I buy something, throw something, hit something, all of those things, um, those are transitive verbs. They have direct objects. Um, those can be used in the past tense, or the passive voice, sorry, not past tense. Obviously, they can use it in the past, uh, but the passive voice, so that you can use something like, um, the the books were purchased by a generous donation or something like that. Um, that's passive voice, and you can use that because buying things has a direct object. That's a transitive verb. So, uh, die Bücher wurden von von einem uh, von einer Spinde gekauft. Uh, they were bought by a uh, donation. Um, do, do, do. I love learning different word orders. Yes, word order is actually fun for me. I know that sounds weird, but I'm one of those grammar nerds that think that uh, grammar is fun. Um, and I find it entertaining to uh, kind of find where do all the puzzle pieces within a German sentence go um, and figure out how all of these things work together. Um, so, yeah, I find it entertaining and, and fascinating. Uh, all right, we've been on here for about an hour now, so I'm going to uh, call it a night. Uh, I do have some other things that I have to accomplish before I go to bed for the night, and it's 9 p.m. here in uh, good old Illinois. Um, so I am going to uh, pass this on to uh, whatever it is that you are about to do on YouTube without me. Um, Chad has one question. It says, uh, can you get by without knowing how to read and recognize the preteritum? Uh, is it true it is mostly written and uh, read? Yes, it is mostly in written German. Um, it's narrative past, so it's used in that way. Um, the entirety of this book is uh, German fairy tales. This book is all written in that same tense, um, and that's because it's, uh, it's a narrative story. Um, if you're reading, lots of books are also not written in that because it's a stylistic choice. Um, so some books that I've read are written in the present tense, uh, which I believe this one is written in the present tense uh, because it's at that A1 level. Um, and then there's other ones that are written in the perfect tense. Uh, but can you get away with not learning the preteritum? Um, with three exceptions, haben, sein, and modal verbs. Uh, if you don't learn those three with the uh, preteritum tense, uh, then you'll have some real struggles because those are always used in the preteritum. Um, even if you're trying to say something like speaking in German, uh, if you're doing it in the past tense and you're talking about something that was, you need a, a form of that preteritum tense. But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's the last question I'm doing tonight. I'm out of here. It's been fun. It's been real. Uh, love y'all. I'll see you the next time.